Hello and welcome back to Dead But Alive Southern England. Right, next day. I was woken up in the middle of the night by screams. A Zed had apparently attract had been attracted by the noise of the camp and had found its way through our defences. Yes, thank you. Don't need to keep seeing the tutorial, thank you. Oh, excellent, I'm back in the fight. That one's going the slowest. That's not bad, that's not bad. Damn it. I thought it was going to stop on the fall. Oh well. Perfect. Excellent. That is... yeah. <laughs> I'll definitely take, t t you know, plus 27. That was an easy kill. So, nobody worth talking to. I'm assuming he's still... yep. Odd bug that, but okay. Right, so, we need more food. Let's start with some simple cooking. Now let's head out. Okay. So there's a possible location of their base there. But I want to get some supplies in first, I think, so... The countryside here is largely flat farmland, and there are a few barrows and wooded areas among a terrain of, heath of heathland and pretty country villages. There are a few populated areas here, so there probably aren't too many infected souls to cause trouble. We think there'll be a little food here, and don't expect to see too many zeds hanging around. Worried about our supplies running out, we went to explore a tiny village far from the city. Just take a look at this photo I took. <laughs> what a location, eh? To our alarm, we were not the first to arrive at the scene, and the undead were waiting for us. Okay, at least a few of my uh, combatants are back up. Okay, anything but the skull at this point. If I can hit that 6, that would have been excellent, but I'll take 22. He's going to get a triple skull, isn't he? Oh, thank God for that. Whew. It wasn't until after the fight that we'd noticed how close a call it had been, and when the dust settled, we tended to our wounds and looked around. You think he can handle a f experiencing a fight like this? That is, until you wake up screaming at three in the morning. Nobody gives a penny for my thoughts now, though. No call for philosophy these days. Supplies are what we were here for, and a ladder contain and a ladder contained food of all sorts. A lot was spoiled, but some were still edible, and additionally there were a few shotgun shells hidden in a chest of drawers of the bedroom. That was not a great run, we didn't get a lot out of that. So let's let's go for a high risk food run, I think. I've trekked through some of the small villages here, past the banks of the River Test, which flows over and underground here, towards the sea. The area is relatively close to Southampton and the town of Winchester, but the place feels remote and rural, and there aren't too many people around probably not many Zeds to cause us trouble either. We think there's a lot of food here, and a very large population of Zeds. That's a bit contradictory, but that's what you get when you have uh, random generation. We should expect to lose people in any visit to this location. The eerie silence got to our nerves, and more than once someone jumped at shadows, and the owner of this shop had put up signs to frighten off looters. Unsurprisingly, it hadn't really helped much. As soon as we entered the scene, we heard a now familiar groaning of the undead, and we prepared to fight. Yeah, so far the only guy I've encountered who has any armor rating is Mike. Stop, stop, stop. God, that was close. That one's gonna stop really quite low. Damn it. Seventeen. Eh, not great. Haha. -ha. That was bloody close. Okay then. Over one of the times twos, but damn it. Okay, this is not going well. He's almost certainly about to get injured. Unless she uh, hits on a skull, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. 
Okay, I've still got a decent combat up. Stop right there. Stop. Okay, good. 41. Haha, <laughs> beat that. Uh, it's nice having somebody who's combat effective. I appreciate technically you can win everything with uh, even a generic survivor, but. You've got a much better chance if you've got somebody who's actually useful in a fight. Yeah, 20. That's okay, it's not great. Oh, bloody hell. <sighs> so swap around for Steve, he's slightly better in a fight. No, 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 good. Okay, 19, that's not bad. Haha! <clears throat> that's bloody close. Somehow, the zombies aren't chewing on our bones right now. We've survived another battle. It's not as if I didn't learn to handle my feelings in the military, but God, sometimes I'm, even I'm shit in my pants. Everything I do, I do for Emily. So what happened next? Well, we stumbled upon a stack of rough material and found it full of food. Largely boxes of dry goods. All were a welcome addition to our supplies. Only plus six. God damn it. Plus we had a bit of luck and found a large cache of acrylic sheeting and some foaming and some forming wire. Both of which will be useful as construction materials. Okay, let's go for this one. I remember passing through here on a trip to Wells. The landscape was picturesque, largely arable fields bordered by hedges. Lots of roads crisscrossed the area. And I remember a river too. We didn't pass any big towns, so there aren't likely to be too many people around, infected or otherwise. And there should be at least some food here, and we don't expect too much trouble. We heard rumours of a small farmstead nearby that might have some useful supplies, and we went to check it out. We picked a nearby house and decided to try our luck. The door was locked, so we smashed out one of the windows and went inside. And we couldn't find anything of use in the house, but the locked door to the garage seemed more promising. It's definitely somewhere around here. This is actually on this side. There it is. We took everything that might have been useful, and instead we found we found a stash of conserves, and moreover we discovered some ammo. Need more food, damn it. Okay. We're gonna go to there and then we're gonna do that um, main mission. Southwest of Yeovil, and memories of the pub here. Laughing clown. The town is still densely urban at this point, and I expect that the area is thronging with zeds, none of which leads to a relaxing drink. We're sure that there's some food here, and a concentration of zeds too, so the place will be risky to visit. We understood that to get the really good stuff we had to take the risk of going into the city. We quickly checked the vehicles in the lot looking for one that we could break into fairly easily, but it seemed we'd tested our luck one time too many, and one of us was grabbed from behind while looking around. Use bullets. Because I have absolutely no use for all the ammunition this game keeps giving me. Bollocks! Okay. That could have gone better. Uh, let's see if I can. The odds of me getting. No, I've missed the triple skull. All I can do now is hope that this uh, scumbag manages to hit on uh, a skull. Damn it. Have fun being injured, Carl. Okay, Steve, you're up. Nope, 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 nope. Bollocks. Not doing well at the moment. Okay, that's two skulls. Go for the triple. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Triple skull. I think that's the first time I've ever managed to do that on a... Um, Go you know, full row rather than with one of the doubles. So 
take that five, that's okay. That'll do me nicely. Aha! And that zombie is down. We only survived this time because we worked together and watched each other's backs. We have to stick together. You think you can handle experiencing a fight like this until you wake up screaming at three in the morning? Matter of a mind, to twist an old saying. For now, at least. But what was the result? A glittering light caught her eyes, the reflection of something silvery and mesmerizing. It turned out to be a job lot of salted peanuts in their bags. A practical and delicious find. Additionally, we found a few rounds of ammo lying on the floor, and we were pleased to find a stash of pine planks along with construction materials as well. Okay then, let's walk to the Dorchester area. Dorchester is a nice town, the, co the county town of Dorset and a short distance from some lovely countryside. And for me, it's filled with youthful memories of jaunts with Tinny and some of our other mates from my unit. God, I wonder how many zombies are now crawling through those straight streets of my youth. We should further investigate the rumours about the possible location of Ted's base in Dorchester. We went into Dorchester itself today. Carl didn't think it would be a good idea to take a big group in there, because he was afraid that might draw attention. So we waited outside while he went further in. He didn't want to go too far in, in case he found someone and needed to get out quickly. But there were some interesting things about the outskirts of town. Most of the Zeds had been cleared out, something that we found surprising. A town of that size should have been crawling with them but it looks like someone had been taking care to make sure they didn't build up. There was also a bunch of tags on buildings, graffiti of people's names that looked very recent. Carl said some of the paint on the buildings he found deeper in Dorchester was still wet, prompting him to leave before he ran into the person who made it. Okay, so that's some interesting clues for the day. Not much else we can do today, so on to the next day. Robbed. I was woken very early this morning. It appears some looters made it through our defences, silently killed one of our guards, and stole some supplies. Scumbags. Okay, Lucy, what do you want to talk about? Sorry about before, but I'm ready to talk about what happened to me, if you're willing to listen. N no pressure, of course. If you'd rather not hear me go on about this again, I'll understand. Let's listen. Thank you. Like I was saying before, I was in the middle of my shift when I saw this old woman struggling on the ground. I initially assumed she was sick, but of course it wasn't an illness she was coming to. Well, at least not the sort of illness I was prepared to face. I was trying to help her up, but her eyes were deranged. And she was in the midst of true, genuine panic. There was this coughing fit and gasps for breath and then and nothing. This poor woman died right in my arms. H have you ever seen it? Been there at the actual moment that it happens? Yes, I have then you know. There's nothing worse than the moment they turn. Something unnatural takes over their body. Something, I don't know, inhuman. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's wrong. Getting back to it, she turned on me and quickly. I don't even think I'd ever seen it come on that fast since. And there I was, just trying to hold back this old woman who couldn't have weighed more than a hundred pounds if she was soaking wet. It was taking all my strength just to keep her off me. I could have hit her or shot her or something, but it's, a, it's difficult to articulate. It just, it didn't feel right. I knew this woman. She was a good woman. Yet here she was trying to kill me. Let's just keep listening. It was my partner that saved me. He tried the taser first, I think, but that didn't work. He ended up needing to use his gun. Again, you can tell this isn't written by somebody who's actually from this country. Police in this country do not carry guns. At all. Outside of special armed response units that only get called in for very specific circumstances. Yep. <laughs> there would not be any guns being used by the British police. Five or six shots it took before she finally went down. It wasn't the last time someone in my unit saved my ass from a Z. I need to repay them, somehow. That's why I need to find them. We've all seen worse by now, but for some reason... That woman is the one I just... I can't forget. Thanks for listening to me. We all need friends at times like this. I'm glad I found one. Okay, let's do some cooking. Which is at least quite efficient. Okay, so we've got another investigation down here. So let's pick up a bit of food and then go have a look at that. 
The countryside here is largely flat farmland, and there are a few barracks and wooded areas among a terrain of heathland and pretty country villages. There are a few populated areas here, so there probably aren't too many infected souls to cause trouble. We should hopefully find some food here, and the risk is minimal. Down a country lane that was once a little more on the dirt track, we came across a small deserted village, and one of the group pointed out a nearby house, and we decided to try our luck. The door was locked, so we smashed one of the windows and went inside, and as soon as we entered the scene, we heard the now familiar groaning of the undead, and we prepared to fight. That's just a basic great guy. You've got a really good chance of killing him, providing I don't do anything stupid. Yeah, that wasn't too stupid. Oh, let's see if I can do an absolute maximum damage hit. Oh, 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 good. Oh, ho, ho. 50 damage. Beat that. He's gonna get the bloody... You bastard! What the hell were the odds of you getting that triple skull? Against a 50 hit? Jesus Christ. I've won with a hit of about 10 before now. We had a close call, but fortunately we survived, and it could have been a lot worse. I keep trying to make sense of it all, to see some good in all this madness, but oh, there's nothing good about this. I no longer feel these things like I used to. Hell, oh, one day I might not feel them at all. There was no time to rest after the fight. We had to find what we'd come for and get back, and we came across some cheese and butter in the cellar. A nice find. Moreover, we peered into a back room, and there was rubble and rubbish everywhere. Among the decay we had a lucky find, a discarded pistol, still loaded. Chopping the furniture provided us with some building materials as well. So, Salisbury is a nice town, and ancient, and ancient with a village atmosphere. And I'll always have fond memories of the weeks I spent there with my army mates. I expect now that the area is really quite dangerous, filled with the infected and their desolate legacy. Legacy of panic, looting and decay. There might be a few things of value in the town, as it had a large population, 40,000 or something like that, but that would also make it a dangerous place to visit. We think that we'll find a, quite a lot of food here, but local Z activity is high, and a mission here should be regarded as dangerous. Today we investigated rumours of supplies to be found in a more populated area, and the apartment building looked almost unaffected, by the utter chaos on the street. We broke down the front door and randomly picked an apartment, and we didn't find anything of value. We didn't found anything? That should be we didn't find anything, hence why my brain order corrected it. Except for a large locked strong box. Yes, thank you, you don't have to give me the uh, tutorial every time we uh, do this mini game, you know. lock picking game burns through our supplies quickly. There we go. The lock opened and we were surprised by what we found inside. Inside we found a stash of conserves and also some ammo. And the owner had also stashed away a few fuel cans as well. Okay, so the food situation is not brilliant but it's not awful. So... Right, we've got time to go there and then go do the primary mission. Okay. I remember a trip that took us close to Baloo on that distant summer holiday with my fiance and Emily. The classic cars we saw there were probably wrecks now, or decaying in some poor victim's garage. The terrain is remote and quite beautiful, a mix of trees, mostly pine and oak, separated by tough fields and short harsh grass. There aren't too many houses around here, just the occasional pub and village, so I don't expect that there are too many Zeds in the area. We hope to obtain a few food supplies here. We consider the risk of attack to be pretty low. So let's walk. With our supplies running low, we decided to try our luck in a rural village several miles outside the city. One of the houses caught our attention. The ground floor windows weren't smashed like those of the neighbouring houses, so it probably hadn't been looted yet. And a locked door leading to the basement of the house was just begging to be picked. Okay, so it's 
somewhere on this side. There we go. We took everything that might be useful, and inside we found a stash of conserves. Food plus one? Seriously? We also discovered some ammo, and more than that we hit on a bunch of tools. <sighs> well that was a fairly worthless one, alright. The countryside around here really is quite pleasant, and I have lots of happy and often drunken memories of roaming the streets with Tinny and some of my mates from my unit. One particular night comes to mind when we decided to yob to the Canada Best Giant, carrying Lola, Tinny's girlfriend of the day, on my back. I can't actually remember how far we got, but we did not make it to the Giant. Dorchester's a nice town. I don't expect it's very picturesque these days. These dark days after the viral crisis. Carl believes that we're close to tracking down the location of Ted's base in Dorchester, and he wants to investigate the area further. We've been staying clear of Dorchester itself since we heard the rumours of Ted's own being nearby, but we've noticed something whenever we pass by the area. Whenever there's a clearing off the roads, we can almost certainly find some tyre tracks. A lot of cars all seem to be leaving the road in the same direction. Could be nothing, but we see more and more of them each time, to the point where it can't just be a coincidence. It could well be Ted's own. A group that big should have a lot of vehicles, and we've seen evidence of them coming and going to all the nearby camps. This is something worth checking out further, I think. Okay, so we've still got to do at least one more uh, thing. Okay, no, but that is close enough to be worth checking out. The plains here extend for miles, and there are a group of small villages connected by winding roads, where the area is mostly countryside with a low population density. There's probably some ammo supplies here, and the area has a sparse population, so it's classified as a low risk. We went out looking for supplies today in some nearby countryside, and we were amazed to find the back door to one house was unlocked, yet there were no signs of looters having found it. One of the rooms, however, was locked, and we decided that this had to be where the owners kept the good stuff. We took everything that might be useful, and inside we found a stash of conserves, plus some ammo. What's more, the owner had stashed away a few fuel cans. Can't complain about that. All right. Next day. We've been piecing together more and more about the location of the bandit camp in recent days, and Carl has been doing great work for us, and his tracking abilities have been remarkable in getting evidence that we would not have caught. He and Mike were talking this morning, and before we set out today, the two of them, Asked to speak to me. Yes, 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 thank you. Hey there, boss. I was hoping to bend your ear for a second. I think we've got a lead on those Ted's own wankers. Are you down to something more specific than somewhere around Dorchester now? Yep. We've been going down the possible locations, and there's one that stands out. There's an old army base right outside of Dorchester. Seems like a place those wankers are trying to hide themselves in. Have you been stationed there, Mike? Nah, actually I don't know that much about it. Well, I know there's a base there and I had some friends that spent some time there for various things. That's about it. Why do you believe they're hiding in that location? Well, they'd need to be nearby based on what we've seen. The graffiti, the tracks of cars going off-road, that bandit I found right outside of town. All the signs indicate they're close to Dorchester. The army base is the best place to set up camp. Lots of fences, supplies, nice big brick buildings. Probably the safest place in Dorchester. That's where I'd set up camp. Hmm, I don't know for sure. Still, it seems like it's worth checking out at the very least. What do you think, boss? Let's investigate. Hmm, I'll go alone. I can move faster that way. No, not this time. I know you've gone alone before, but this time we might wind up bumping right up against their camp. Yes, don't forget, it's dangerous to go alone. Incidentally, that's a game I have never played because I am far, far too young. Going alone is far too dangerous. We should go as a group. Yeah, I think she's right. Besides, it might be dangerous. Oh, fine, I guess. We could start heading out first thing in the morning. I'm not going by myself, there isn't enough light left today. 
spread the news around the camp. You should make sure you get some rest tonight. Tomorrow might be quite eventful. Okay, and have we got anything interesting to say? Probably not. No. Okay. Okay, well let's start by doing some cooking. Incidentally, she got kidnapped ages ago. Why is she still hanging around? You know, I'm almost tempted to use, you know, to build some booby traps, but I don't think it's worth it. Not worth it. You know, I can spare the ammo. Hell, I can even probably spare the supplies. It's just the time that it takes. Is it? You know, it takes bloody forever. So yeah, that I suspect is our effectively our final raid on the place. So let's grab some food first. We can expect to find some food supplies here, though it's an area of moderate risk, and so advise caution. Today we found a small country village that looked like it had been abandoned for quite some time. We were amazed to find the back door to one house was unlocked, yet there were no signs of Plutus having found it. We thought the location was empty at first, then we were ambushed by a group of zombies. Okay, Steve, you're on head smashing duty. Okay, 19. That's not bad. She's going to get the bloody triple skull, isn't she? No? Okay, good. <sighs> okay. Steve, you're on smack and duty again. Your punishment for being a complete dick. If you were nicer to people, I'd be more concerned about whether you lived or died. Dang it. I was hoping to uh, just nudge over onto the 6th there, but oh well. Haha. I don't actually remember that much of the fight. That part of my brain seemed to have just switched off. That's probably for the best. I keep trying to make sense of it all, to see some good in all this madness. But there's nothing good about this. Thou shalt not kill, it says in the Bible. God, how far away from church and everything does it seem to be from our reality now? We all felt that some supplies would be a good trade-off for our troubles, so we got looking for them, and we found a few tins of food in the pantry. And things got better, as in a small front bedroom, cramped, dusty, dry, dead, a flimsy wardrobe that had no clothes inside, and hidden in the back found a few bullets rolling around. And further the shed, housed an industrial saw and lots of wood, the latter of which we immediately took possession of. Okay, I think I'm going to head there, but I want to just quickly pop back to camp. I think I'm going to go have a chop some wood. Get a few more supplies in. And you know what? I think that's probably a pretty good point to actually end this part. So I'll say thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next.